Welcome to the National History Day project as this year's theme of 2017 is conflict and compromise. Your host, Reagan Meany, shall focus on the unsettled conflicts between Parliament and King Charles I, which drove Great Britain into a civil war. King Charles I was born in 1600 and crowned in 1625. In March of 1625, Prince Charles I became King of England, Scotland, and Ireland before his beheading in 1649. Now, once in command, tension grew between Parliament and King Charles I. Now, to summarize this, King Charles I used the divine right as an excuse to resolve his conflicts with Parliament by dismissing Parliament whenever he didn't get his way. At the same time, Parliament tried many ways to keep King Charles I in check. Now in 1623, Prince Charles I and the Duke of Birmingham went to Spain for marriage negotiations. However, Prince Charles I didn't want to get married to a Spaniard. So the negotiations failed, and instead Prince Charles I arranged the marriage for him and Henrietta Maria of France. Furthermore, Princess Henrietta Maria is Catholic, and the Church of England is Protestant. Thus, the marriage is a threat to the Protestant Reformation and the Church of England. So effective immediately, Prince Charles I and Princess Henrietta Maria kept their marriage negotiation a secret until 1625 with the help of George Villas. In the meantime, the rest of England blamed George Villas for this failed marriage negotiation with Spain and consequently King James I declared war on Spain in 1624. As a short-term effect, General Don Ambrosio Spinola laid siege against the Dutch city of Brenda, and by June 1625, Justin Nassau surrendered Brenda. As a result, once Charles I ascended to the throne, King Charles I sent the wrath of England's Royal Navy to Spain in order to intercept valuable cargo ships and vanquished towns. This is known as the Cadiz Expedition, and the mission was a huge failure. Parliament was enraged by this failure and began the process of impeachment. Meanwhile, disputes arose between the MPs about King Charles I's behavior towards the Church of England. Thus, King Charles I dismissed Parliament before the MPs made any decisions, which resulted in a compromise failure. Now forced to bring Parliament back, King Charles I needed funds for his war with the Spaniards. However, Parliament refused. Therefore, King Charles I dismissed that Parliament and just made a brand new one. In 1626, King Charles I started enforcing an all but forgotten law called the Distraint of Knighthood. King Charles I fined those who did not obey this law that no one actually knew existed, while also ignoring the cries of Parliament. Now, Parliament, wanting to gain a leash on this king, did vote to grant a subsidy of £140,000. Moreover, the House of Commons agreed to allow the king to collect tonnage and pondage, but only for a period of one year. In this manner, the House of Commons tried to keep a check on Charles's power by enforcing him to seek the renewal of a grant slash subsidy each year. And as a counterattack, King Charles I's allies in the House of Lords, led by the Duke of Birmingham, refused to pass the bill. Now, furthermore, his war with the Spaniards is just flat out not going well. Henceforth, King Charles I turned his attention towards the French for help. However, the French politics had changed under Cardinal Rougelet, and Cardinal Rougelet used the Royal Navy of England to halt the Huguenots from their uprising, which in return angered King Charles I. So by June 1626, King Charles I sent Walter Montagu to France to organize a French rebellion. The land was to send an English fleet to encourage the rebellion. Now, King Charles I attempted to send two waves of fleets to relieve La Rochelle, but the bloody fogs had set up a blockade around La Rochelle, and the Huguenots lost stronghold. So English ships could not break through the blockade, and this battle is known as the Siege of La Rochelle, and it too is got it. Now, King Charles I still needed more money, and he looked towards Parliament to grant him the funds to wage his war. However, Parliament, still trying to reduce King Charles I's first power, granted him more money on the occasion of King Charles I signing the Petition of Right of 1628, restricting King Charles I's power. However, King Charles I did sign it, but he also did ignore it greatly, resulting this in a failed 
compromise. So by 1629, Parliament had to hold more secret meetings and began drafting the three resolutions. However, King Charles I, believing in his divine right, thus refused to comply with Parliament's demands and dismissed Parliament ruling for his own on 11 years. King Charles I reintroduced a feudal tax in 1635, known as the Ship Money, which was illegal, by the way. As a result, many resisted to pay this tax, and King Charles I just threw him in prison, who didn't pay, of course. Um, during his 11-year rule, which is also known as the 11-year tyranny, King Charles I started changing the Church of England to be more traditional, like Catholicism. Traditional. And in 1633, he appointed William Laud on Bishop of Centerbury. William Laud started a series of unpopular changes to the Church of England. King Charles I insisted that the Church of England's liturgy be celebrated with all the ceremony and vestments called for by the Book of Common Prayer. And to chastise those who refused to accept his reforms, King Charles I used the two most feared courts in the land, the Court of High Commission and the Court of High Star Chamber. The Court of High Commission could basically say an individual was guilty, whether or not they did anything wrong at all, while the Court of Star Chamber could inflict any punishment whatsoever, including torture, with the sole exception of death. As a result, this caused major conflicts with the Scots, which triggered the Bishops' Wars. Multiple wars. To subdue the Scots, King Charles I needed more money, therefore he recalled Parliament in April 1640. Now King Charles I asked to get a subsidy to smother the Scottish uprising, and the House of Commons agreed to allow King Charles I to raise funds for a war, but Parliament demanded the discussion of various abuses of power. Neither sides gave ground on this matter, and eventually Parliament was dismissed three weeks later. Thus Parliament became known as the Short. Parliament. In the meantime, King Charles I attempted to defeat the Scots on his own, but failed miserably. The Second Bishop's War ended in October 1640 with the Treaty of Ripon, which required the king to pay the expenses of the Scottish army. Now, King Charles I made a desperate move, summoning the Magnum Consulium. King Charles I summoned another parliament, in which he, in contrast with its predecessor, became known as the Long Parliament. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The Long Parliament assembled in November 1640 under the leadership of John Pym. Now, Parliament passed the Trieno Act, to which the royal assent, or King Charles I, was granted in February 1641. The Act required that Parliament was to be summoned at least once a year, or once every three years, and that if King Charles I failed to issue a proper summon, the members could assemble on their own. However, Parliament moved on, and in May, Parliament proposed an even far more reaching act, which provided that Parliament could not be dissolved without its own consent. And so, without delay, King Charles I started compromising, and he agreed to bills of attainder, authorizing the executions of Thomas Wentworth and William Laud. Furthermore, ship money, fines, in the distraint of knighthood, and forced loans were declared unlawful. And lastly, the hated courts of Star Chamber and High Commission were finally abolished. However, Parliament was not done in scrutinizing King Charles I, so Parliament intended to impeach Henrietta Maria. So King Charles I decided Parliament went too far, and the compromise became a failure. He set out to arrest five MPs who led the anti Stuart faction on charges of high treason. Consequently, Henrietta Maria made the mistake of informing a friend who in turn alerted Parliament. So when King Charles I stormed Parliament on January 4th, 1642, with an armed force, King Charles I only had to only spoke to William Lenthal as to their whereabouts, to which Lenthal famously replied, May it please your majesty, I have neither eyes to see nor tongue to speak in this place, but as the house is pleased to direct me, whose servant I am here. End quote. On the flip side, Parliament now believes that King Charles I had gone too far, and as a result, a civil war had risen among the ranks, and the two groups formed, the Roundheads who supported Parliament, and the Cavaliers who supported King Charles I. Finally, the civil war started on October 25th, 1642, with the Battle of Itzio. The two groups fought restlessly and tirelessly, with wars favoring neither sides, up until 1644, the Battle of Naseby, where the war finally decided in favor of Parliament. So legend has it, 
that King Charles I went to the Scots to try to get them to invade England more south of the Roundheads. Now, this is an act of treason. But nevertheless, in 1648, King Charles I was captured and Parliament tried to reason with King Charles I again. But King Charles I believed in his divine rights and refused to compromise. As a result, on January 30th, 1649, King Charles I was beheaded in which his last words were, Death is not terrible to me, I'm blessed God, I am prepared.